Hi everybody, this is Kevin Ruan, Senior Customer Experience uh, Manager at SnapLogic. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to configure a Groundplex using the uh, Docker image. And uh, you know, this video does require some technical knowledge around Docker, uh, but I'll walk you through it. And uh, if you are already familiar with uh, configuring Groundplex, uh, this, should, this video should look very similar, uh, familiar to you. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned and we'll go through this step by step. Now, before we go anywhere, uh, it's important to point out the caveat here that I am installing uh, essentially Docker on my uh, laptop. This is a uh, Mac OS. Uh, you're, you may have to um, install Docker on a Linux server, uh, Azure server, um, Windows server, excuse me. Um, so it's it's but the steps that I'm going to show you are very similar to each other. So the very first thing we need to do is actually download Docker, uh, be it on Windows or Linux. If you go into the Docker website and click on Get Started, you should be able to actually uh, go ahead and start downloading uh, the the Docker desktop. Uh, application either for the Mac or Windows. If you have a Linux distribution, um, you might have to do a little bit different, uh, uh, just a little bit of different step in order to retrieve Docker. There are explanations and documentations out there uh, that allows you to install it uh, on CentOS, Ubuntu, or Arc Linux, for example. Okay, so I already have my Docker uh, installed, but I'll just go through the download process just to show you how quickly it is uh, that you can actually get this started. If you go here and it's going to say, hey, get the Docker Community Edition for Mac, and it's going to ask you to log in uh, to do it. It's all for good reasons. So just go ahead and log in and then get Docker. And it's just still download. I'm going to uh, stop mine. And uh, the download process takes uh, pretty quick, uh, a couple of minutes on a good internet connection. And then after you go through the installation process, uh, you will get this uh, runtime on the top right hand side. All right. So another way to validate that you have Docker is if you go to your terminal and hit Docker, uh, you should get this list of commands that are available for Docker. And, uh, and then you should uh, be ready to go. The next thing you need to do is to navigate to the uh, Groundplex um, Dockerized Container Documentation uh, page. I simply Google this, or I am going to actually also paste this in the uh, video notes. Here, you'll actually get the commands for uh, downloading the latest Snapplex. Uh, that you can leverage to create your Groundplex. And uh, it is already in the Docker repository. So all you got to do is run the Docker pull, snaplogic backslash force, uh, what's it, forward slash, snaplogic uh, colon latest. I can never uh, get that one right. But anyway, once you've downloaded, uh, you go into your Docker image, uh, you should be able to see this entry. Uh, the other one, the the other entry I have here is simply something I created before, but you should expect to see, uh, you know, the repository called SnapLogic um, slash SnapPlex, and then the tag will be <laughs> latest. Okay. So another thing that's very important after you download this is actually go in to your organization and make sure you're an admin. Otherwise, you won't be able to do this step. And navigate to the manager here and uh, i'm actually logged into my demo org and in our demo org we have every folder uh, organized by individual scs and i have my own uh, project folder here as well and uh, if i navigate to my own project folder and navigate to the snapplexes tab i can see the ground plexes that i've created here that's specific uh, to my project called Kevin Rua. And for our purpose today, we'll be creating another Snapplex uh, in my own project folder. So in the Kevin Rua project folder. You know, if you do this uh, in the project space, you can do that. Uh, then you'll be creating a Groundplex for the entire organization. So to create a project, uh, sorry, a Snapplex, in this case, I just click on the plus sign here. Select the type, select the name. 
I'm gonna call it. Okay, you run Gruntplex dash demo. Uh, naming convention is entirely up to you. The location has to be Psychic. It's a, just a legacy naming convention uh, that represents Gruntplex. And then the environment here needs to be a unique uh, name. So it could be demo or uh, dev, but it has to be unique. So that whatever naming convention you pick uh, shouldn't have existed already in the organization. So I'm just going to do something like this demo dash or uh, K Ruan. I'm sure that one doesn't exist yet. You can also populate the email address for notifications. So if your uh, Groundplex decides to uh, ill behave, and you'll get an email about that. But I'm not going to populate that here. You can leave the rest of these settings default unless you do have specific proxying needs or um, uh, specific uh, uh, firewall uh, restrictions that prevent you from leveraging these uh, this port 8090. So once you're ready, you just click on create. You can see the spinner going. And uh, once the uh, the reference, in this case, the Snaplex is create, created, you'll get this download link. Okay. So since we're actually dealing with uh, Docker, you don't have to and in, download any of these uh, installation packages. Um, we'll talk about how to leverage these in a separate video. We're at we're going to be actually creating a uh, configuring a Groundplex without Docker. Okay, but you do need this configuration file. So just go ahead and download it. Hit this download button right here, and then. Just take a note of the location here. Um, you're gonna need that for the uh, for when you launch the Docker image. Okay, so cool. Once it's downloaded, let's close that up. Sorry, and then navigate to your terminal again. Now the next steps are quite unique. I'm going to launch uh, Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to grab. A particular uh, line of code out and paste that here and then so after my paste it immediately did a return but you're gonna have to write this particular string docker run dash itd dash h okay you gotta provide a host name local host is fine uh, port 8090 as you saw in the config okay and then this is also the uh, forwarding port which is 8081 so just you can copy it simply like this uh, from the video source if you want or the comments from there you populate what's uh, with a, what you're doing is that uh, you're going to be mounting files into uh, the docker image so dash v allows us to mount files and I've navigated previously to my you know downloads you know groundplex dash k ruan uh, sl uh, props file I'm in this case I'm going to update that uh, and, and give it a dash demo okay and then you're gonna do a hmm, dash demo and after the semicolon you're really referencing where you want to place this file in the uh, docker image and it should be uh, uh, in the opt snap logic etc and then you will be referencing the same exact name here as the original file that you're copying into. Don't change any of that. Then another dash V, uh, you're gonna be mounting a log folder that you want to leverage on your own machine and reference the uh, the run log folder within the OPD snap logic folder in the snap logic Docker image. Okay, just like that. And then, so really this location is really up to you. Okay, finally providing a uh, the image name that we want, which is the SnapLogic slash SnapLogic, uh, SnapLax colon latest. So if you do this, okay, it's gonna fail because I already had the previous Docker running, but you should get a, a complete message like you saw here. So, I just take a look at SnapLogic PS. I mean, sorry, Docker PS. Going crazy, but yeah, we can actually see a uh, Docker take container uh, running. All right. So once that's up, and if you actually go into your dashboard, okay. 
Okay, you should be able to see your groundplex booting up, right? So right now we're still seeing this little uh, stop button. Um, what happens is um, whenever your groundplex is initiated, um, it will ping the control plane, which is this multi-tenant environment, to say that to basically say, "Hey, I'm alive." Um, let me know. I'll let you know whenever I get started, et cetera, et cetera. And you can actually see the last heartbeat check is around uh, 2.38. Okay. And then uh, pretty soon this should come back to life, and then you'll see a uh, up arrow once once the entire process is uh, in, uh, has been completed. Um, and uh, here you can see that the ground plex is it's actually up. And notice this is not the demo one we set up. This is actually the ones that I've initiated earlier by copying and pasting my command. Um, I can actually uh, stop this. Okay. And then just uh, up arrow to my other... Uh, Docker complex uh, SL props uh, command here, and that should complete, right? And let's see in the dashboard. Right now, I don't think it's going to show up. It doesn't show up that fast, but once the uh, groundplex is able to establish communication with the complex, uh, we shall be able to see that groundplex up and running in the dashboard. So give me a second. Okay, it actually did not take too long. I did a, maybe about two refreshes uh, before it came back or it came up. And now we can see there is a uh, one active node for my groundplex K run demo. And if, I, if you go back here, I've actually went ahead and selected it under my drop down and this particular pipeline happens to be in my project folder so that's why I was able to select it and I hit the validate button and the whole pipeline was able to validate properly so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions configuring it uh, it's not uh, too difficult to actually go through for more information you can always visit our website at www.snaplogic.com um, any feedback is welcome. We are always looking to improve. Um, I'm always looking to uh, make some videos that on topics that you guys are interested in. So feel free to give me uh, a ping. Thank you and uh, see you in the next video.